Okay, so we're going to look at converting a simple PWM signal that's coming out of this function generator and converting that into a constant DC source. Now, we've talked before about pulse width modulation. There's many, many ways to get a PWM signal. Um, they're very, very useful. It's a very efficient way to do things. Uh, in this case, we're just going to look at some simple ways to convert, to do a digital to analog conversion convert this uh, variable PWM signal into a constant DC and we're also going to look at designing a simple filter and we'll, we'll do this we'll do this conversion using a very simple filter and you can see here I've got my uh, PWM signal and on the other channel I've got the output DC and what we're going to do is I'm going to show how you can vary your your uh, duty cycle see I'm varying the duty cycle and that is changing the output constant DC value. And we're doing that with a very simple filter. So first thing we're going to do is jump into LT Spice and show you how you can design a simple filter in LT Spice. And then we'll come back here uh, and after we simulate it in LT Spice, we'll see if we get the exact same result here. Okay, so now I'm in LT Spice, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a simulation of a very simple uh, low-pass filter circuit. And here's a simple diagram where I've got my voltage source, and that's going to be my pulse width modulated uh, signal coming in. Now my function generator defaults to 10 kilohertz, so I'm going to start out with 10 kilohertz. Seems reasonable. 10 kilohertz means it has a period of 0 0.0001 seconds. Um, and RC filter, I'm just going to use a R with a C. And to calculate the value that we're going to need for these R and C, um, we can use this simple formula, which tells you what frequency uh, defines the bandwidth uh, using this RC filter. So it will block frequencies above this um, frequency calculated from this. So I'm going to start out by looking at what uh, resistors and capacitors I have available. That would help if I'm going to actually simulate it. And I found out that I looked in my box and I've got a 10K. We can start out with a 10K. And I've got um, a 2.2 microfarad. 2.2 microfarad and we're going to see how that works. Now um, what you can also do is um, set up a little Excel spreadsheet. I, I'm a big fan of Excel. I hate it the way it's configured but it's nice to do some simple calculations. So I've made a simple spreadsheet here where I can put in how many K ohms, how many microfarads, and set up an equation to calculate. So I've got this equation, 1 over 2 pi RC, 1 over 6.28, which is 2 pi, times R in K ohms, so I multiply times 10,000, and C times microfarads, 0 0.0001, and it comes out with a frequency of 0.7 hertz. Huh, okay. So that means above 0.7 hertz, it will start to cut down uh, the frequency. So that might be good. So let's take a look. And the way we can simulate this is to do a frequency scan. And one of the great things about uh, LT Spice is you can do a simulation um, of a frequency scan and get a um, look at the bandwidth. So we're going to go simulate. Simulation command, go to AC analysis, type of sweep, decade. We're going to do a logarithmic decade. Let's say 10 points per decade. Start frequency will go from 1 hertz to 10123, which is 10 kilohertz. And this should give us a sweep of frequency from 1 to 10 kilohertz and show us what the output is. And we're going to look at the output over here. So first thing I need to do here is rename this as AC space 1 period. That's what uh, LT Spice needs in order to do a scan. 
So I've got this name, so I should be able to do a scan. Okay, so I do a simulation. It's got the output. I haven't told it what I want to look at. So what we want to do is we're going to look at this output of the RC filter uh, as it goes from 1 hertz to 10 kilohertz. So we'll click on that. And there you go. Now the solid line is the um, result. Um, this is the magnitude of the output. And this dash line is the phase, so you can ignore the phase. But you can see down after 1 hertz, uh, around 10 hertz, it's down almost five, like 5 dB. And then 100 hertz, it's down uh, 18 dB. And then 10 kilohertz, it's way down. So you would expect that this is going to get rid of most of the um, 10 kilohertz signal and just leave us with a DC. And as we saw in our calculation, the cutoff is about 0.7 hertz. So down in here somewhere, um, you can see we're getting down to the 3 dB point. Okay, so now that we've seen that this simple RC filter is going to block frequencies over 1 to 10 hertz, um, let's actually simulate this as a PWM signal so that we can compare it to our bench results. So again, this is a 10 kilohertz um, PWM signal with a period of 0.1 milliseconds. And what we're going to do is we are going to change this to a pulse. And it's going to have an initial value of 0, on of 5. Now with our um, function generator, we did an offset of 2.5 to make it go from 0 to 5 because normally it goes minus 2.5 to plus 2.5. So if we set it to on a 5 and initial to 0, this will give us 0 to 5 to match our uh, function generator. Uh, delay, nothing, rise and fall. On time, okay. We're going to have an on time. To give it 50% uh, duty cycle, we're going to have an on time of 0.05 milliseconds. So 0.05 M. Remember we said that it's a 0.1 millisecond period for 10 kilohertz. Well, this is half of that. And the period is 0.1 milliseconds. All right. So that should give us a pulse width modulated waveform of 50% duty cycle, magnitude of 5. So here is your um, pulse. Let me clean that up a bit. <clears throat> There's our uh, waveform pulse and let's do a simulation uh, transient and we're going to do a top stop time of say 0.1 seconds. So here's our transient simulation. Now what we can do is we can run the simulation and here we go from 0 to 100 milliseconds and what we can do is look at the input and there's the input, 0 to 5 volts. Uh, we're going to zoom in here. And you can see here's our 50% duty cycle. So that looks good. Let's delete that. Now let's look at the output. And here's the output. Let's hit uh, zoom to fit. And you can see it's increasing and increasing as you charge up the capacitor. Now let's change this uh, simulation to make it go to one second so we can see the whole thing simulate and there you go you can see it comes up after a tenth of a second it flattens at 2.7 volts and that is what we should see on our oscilloscope uh, as an output so let's go take a look at the scope and see what the result is okay so here we are and uh, looking at the scope I've got my 10 kilohertz um, Pulse width modulated waveform, magnitude of 5 volts going from 0 to 5. I've got a 2.5 volt offset, so that will go from 0 to 5. And you can see here's the input here, 0 to 5 volts. It's 2 volts per division, 2, 4 and a half. So it's 5 volts going in, 10 kilohertz. And the output is 1 volt per division, so it's 1, 2, and a little over a half. So we got 2.7 in the LT Spice simulation, and it looks like we got exactly the same thing here. So um, again, it's um, a very simple way 
to do a digital to analog conversion with a PWM signal. And all you got to do is add an RC filter. And you can see it will do this, um, give you this result. So anyway, that's um, something to think about using LT Spice. I uh, hope this helps. Take care and have a good day. Thanks.